have you ever interviewed anyone before? Yeah, here and there. Not like professional or anything, but I like to dig into people a little bit or dig into situations and just discover, be given the freedom to just ask so many questions. But here you've already tricked me into asking me a question. Indeed. <laughs> I can't help myself. Okay, so I'm curious about you. I know you're from Finland. Yeah. What, what was normal like? What was normal life like for you before this? I'd say quite basic Finland life is you. I have uh, we have four children in my family, so lots of kids growing up. And school, you go, I did quite well in school, lots of ho normal hobbies. Then you study for six years, you get a master's degree in some very sensible field. I did master of science and engineering and most of my peers did as well. Was that and a topic you were interested in or just because it was a good career choice? It was a good career choice and the most broad thing I could find. I chose the most broad thing because I wasn't quite sure. So I thought, this information, information networks, it was called the thing I studied, mm -hmm. which was broadly mathematics and digital technologies and computer science felt like a but it was also an uh, expectations from home, for sure. It's kind of expected. That's what you're going to do. It's a sensible choice. Do you regret that choice? Maybe it could have... Uh, I was kind of living in a bubble, in a way. I was living in a bubble that this is... Everything is figured out. I just do get into this really good, prestigious university and I graduate, then I'm set for life. Mm -hmm. And I was living in that illusion for maybe too long. I was allowed to be a bit childlike maybe for longer, which is good. It made me maybe more positive. But then I could have maybe seen reality sooner that, okay, life actually begins when you, you know, leave the school and university system and you find that, oh shit, there's a whole real world here and nobody can tell you what to study for the test. So it's mixed feelings for sure. So what happened after school? After school, I tried a different, some nine to five different internships data analytics, I did web development, did some customer success in different like expected career paths and just none of them really hit home for me. I, was, I wouldn't say depressed, that's such a strong word, but I never felt it was always a downhill trend whenever I started doing a normal 9 to 5. Mm -hmm. So I took that as a sign like, okay, let's keep uh, looking and I took a year off kind of doing a yoga teacher training I did recently the past year and uh, just I've been doing random podcasts and doing whatever I, I find I enjoy doing. Coming here for instance is something I enjoy doing. Uh -huh. So more about connection in a way? Connection, yeah. Connection with the, the past year, yes, I've been connection with myself and maybe the body and the mind but also with other people, yes. Mm -hmm. I do enjoy if you see the technology on one hand and humans on the other hand. It's fun to technology, but I do enjoy also to move, move on the human axis. Is that what brought you here? Partly. It's a nice combination of technology and humans. I, I lived during COVID in a co-living space. It was really the best way. I really enjoyed life that way. So this is kind of a large co-living community, which is definitely part of it. But it's also very technology oriented and as I'm exploring what to do for uh, how to what to do for work essentially this is a good place to do all of those things so you have uh, a fork in the road in front of you where you can decide from many paths yes and maybe here opens up so many other new ones yes and I've, I've had that fork for many years now feels like and I still have chosen the explore path the explore option as much as I can for good and for bad and what have you found here so far to, to be potential paths for you? Yeah, I thought about this briefly. That there are three big interesting topics in the 21st century that I find. There's the internet. It's really interesting what you can do with the internet. Communicate instantaneously and crypto and many. It's, and that causing all kinds of societal changes. So that's an interesting field. Then. AI is another interesting field just because the insane changes happening all the time, exponential changes. And it's automation as always. I've always enjoyed that. That's a bit of, 
Like, why would we work when we can get the computers mm -hmm. and the robots to do it for us? And the third one is like our biology, like understanding the human body and the human brain better. So that implies longevity. And I did my minor actually was neuroscience, but it was just how we think and how we act and how we live is now coming from a much more data oriented place. Mm -hmm. You can track and understand scientifically. And it's like a booming in that sense. So these three are interesting topics, but for me personally, what will I be doing? I don't know. If do you, I knew I'd be doing it. Do you see yourself as a scientist, an engineer? Yes and no. Like I'm more generalist than either of those. But maybe that's my naive mindset that you can be a generalist when in reality you just have to face the music and do a deep dive into something. You can't always be the most broad possible. You gotta commit to it, to one of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So my path forward is, is definitely unclear. But for the immediate future, I'm gonna explore this pop-up city movement as much as possible. That's my only clear path right now. Like it uh, intuitively makes a lot of sense to be in this type of environment. So I will go from this pop-up city, now we are here near Singapore, and to the next one is one is in India. There's another one in South America. Mm -hmm. And I think they are popping up more and more. Yeah, I feel the same. It's super interesting to find all these great people. Yep. What made you take up this role of interviewer? Somebody, I asked another girl who did podcasts here actually, and she was like, I do it because it's a nice way to meet friends. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's a nice way to get to know people. You have a reason to talk to them for half an hour. Yes, yes. And then, and then maybe boundaries as well. If you want to move on to someone else, you, you know, that's okay. That's the interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a very, and it may, maybe not so much about making friends for me, but just getting to know people and how they think. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, it was something that uh, I enjoy doing. So I thought, okay, let's do it for a while while I'm here. About how many have you done now? 17 in one month, so circa 20 in a month. That's pretty good. But it's also, it was the, how the honeymoon period in the start for sure. Mm. Everything is exciting, new people, you got a lot of energy. So it's, it was easy to just pick someone from the co-working space and let's go and do them. Will you continue? Yes, I think I will continue, but be more maybe selective of, this is a really, person I actually want to talk to a lot mm -hmm. rather than do anything just because for doing it. Has your intuition been correct when you're like, I think this is an interesting person? Yeah, usually it's probably a self-fulfilling prophecy that if you are genuinely curious, you are more engaged and you are asking better questions and so forth. And sometimes I'm for sure I'm, I can be wrong, but usually pretty good intuition. What kind of people are the most interesting to talk to for you? Good question. I think I like like life wisdom and ah. insight and uh, how should I put it? Like useful insight, intelligence or something like in, in, in those lines. I'm more of truth oriented. So I try to find interesting truths about the world and about technology, about people and society. So hope to understand that from others. Ooh, that's a nice sunset. Maybe I'll turn the camera because the thing is, it gets so dark, it doesn't really see us anyway. So I'll show people what we're walking. This is the iterations. I'm improving the, what do you call it? And what about the, the AI transcripts and those kind of things? Yeah. Do you have any goals for, for that? Is it just a way people who don't want to listen can, can read or do you have another idea for that? It's more of a thing that it, it might be useful down the line. Mm -hmm. So I do it now. It's such an easy thing to transcribe and just put it in a Substack post and save it. So anyone can read, but then potentially down the line, you could feed them to some LLM and get some short, I don't know, uh, insights on 20 episodes and do a, I don't know, post on that. 
So I don't have any clear uh, utility for them, but I think it might be useful down the line. It's just an option to have it. Who are the people you're close to in your life? That's a good question. I think my family comes first. Like my siblings and I'm actually quite close with my parents. And I have a quite a large friend circle back in Finland which, with a few deep, deeper connections. Yeah, that would be it. I was also in a long time relationship with this girl from Finland, but so that's also a deep, deep one. I always find it easy to make friends. I feel like I'm never alone in a way. Even when traveling, I can, it's easy to strike up conversation or get to know people. Do you find you have enough deep connections here? Here after a month. Does it feel like something's missing? <laughs> well, there's the intimacy aspect. Since it's more, more te tech guys than, than girls here. But not I haven't. I haven't thought about it that I would be missing. No, not yet. Maybe it's has, the depth of it has been. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I haven't felt that now. Yet. What but do you like most about being here? Mm. I think this idea space is very interesting. You, you get to... You get to meet new ideas and I like... I started reading recently this sovereign individual book, for instance, that I wouldn't, I would never have read it if I weren't around these people who are discussing the ideas in a very mm -hmm. animated way. I, like, I got curious. So this is a nice place to for ideas. I, I like to live in the in that world, maybe. Ideas and yeah. Do you think you'll miss that when you're gone here? Yes. But. It gives me some hope how easy it is to create an uh, environment where people are how fast how fast like we for instance became quite open and talking about a lot of things like it took a week too if you are living together you can get quite close quite fast and so i'm gonna miss it but i'm also quite optimistic for the future maybe we go back okay optimistic for the future that it's possible to create environments that foster that kind of, if, if that's what you want out of life, you can create those environments that are inclusive for ideas and whatnot. Like maybe being here gives you a blueprint to do something similar, yeah. but, but different in your own way. Yes. Yes. It, for a long time, ever since the co-living thing during COVID, I've had like intention in life to try to set up life in such a way that you can have more more co-living type. It doesn't have to be full-time, say only a third of the year you live in a very co-living environment. Mm -hmm. And in Finland we have often during the summers, we live in a summer cottage. That's like a big thing in Finland. And that's the whole family gets together and spends time together. So that's kind of a co-living. So I'm for sure trying to figure that out. Is it a large co-living like this or a smaller group of people? I'm not sure. But that's my long-term goal, partly. If you were being a part of a startup, mm. would you be more the CEO leader type? Would you be more the CTO focused on tech? Definitely, if those are the options, CEO, 100%. But, yeah, I could be, and people always say that they are a big picture. You know, I'm a, like big picture and they don't do the small things. But I feel like I'm actually better on the big picture. I'm, uh, when it comes to tech, for instance, I'm very excited about the broad movements and how does, a, how does the system work as a whole. But you come in and look at the, this specific line and the bug on, on code line 46 and you lose me yeah. <laughs> instantly. Have you ever had any leadership kind of roles? 
Yeah, I was in the military as second lieutenant. It's, it's mandatory military in Finland. So I did one year. That I was too young then, like 18. And then it was supposed to be a leader of 10 people. I was not mature enough then. Mm -hmm. But I did it and I learned a lot. But a couple... Uh, two years back I was offered actually the CEO role in a small uh, business. This person I had worked with in another company. And at that point I just looked at myself and I was like, this, I'm not ready. That's what kind of spurred me to go into this yoga year. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm not... I, can, I, I know what good work is and I know what I, where I'm at, like I'm not it yet. Mm -hmm. So I do feel I'm after this year of understanding myself better, I'm in, in a better place than I've ever been to do, but it's just unclear what exactly. Oh, doggos. What are your fears for the future? Fears. In a broader sense. Yeah, I like that. And we go on the beach. Yeah. Fears. Partly is... I've, I've always had this uh, intuition that everything was going to be alright. I'm very optimistic. Even though I have no idea what's going to happen next, I'm sure I will figure it out. And a fear I have is that intuition may be wrong. That I find myself at 55 and like holy shit I nothing turned out the way I thought it would like no family no meaningful work and that sort of thing so that may be something I fear something else sometimes my cognitive mood can change a lot during a day or a week sometimes I can be afraid of talking to a person and other times I'm like couldn't care less it's very interesting, depending on how you sleep and how you, I don't know, have you worked out and eaten well or... But those more real, deep fears probably connected to that, which I mentioned. Looking ahead here at the, the future of being painted by other people here and uh, what, uh, what's unfolding. Yeah. Does any of that um, give you hope or fear? hope mostly or excitement not very little fear connected to would you rather good things happen or interesting things good good things and i think that it's more than likely that good things are going to happen in the near future or during our lifetime much mm. much more good things but I wouldn't say afraid, but I'm maybe concerned about if we see a collapse of the welfare nation state as we see it in Western uh, countries. Like how will, that's probably going to cause a lot of misery for many people. Misery and uh, rough times for my friends and family, I suppose, back home. So we, that's um, something I'm concerned with. At the same time, very optimistic that all these AI improvements might increase our productivity such mm -hmm. that it won't be an issue. But it, right now it looks, I think it's difficult for many people just to make ends meet and it's going to get harder. Yeah, uh, even if, if things get better, it'll be worse before it gets better. Uh, yeah. And I feel like most of the time the increases of uh, well-being go first to the rich people rather than... Yeah. Uh, those that are in need. I can see it happening again here. Yes. I, uh, for somehow I have, I've adopted this thought that it, it always starts with the rich people and then it trickles down to the rest. Like the iPhone came first, the, the phone came to the rich people and now everybody in the whole world has a phone. So I kind of think it will happen the same. But what do I know? <laughs> I think it'll be like that for medical things as well, for rich people. Yeah. I can pay for it, get it first. Yes. Would you choose some form of immortality? Would you want to live for hundreds of years? Uh, these are so good questions. Yes, 100%. I would. Uh, if I was forced to say uh, immortal, that might be a harder question. But if you get to choose when you die, yeah, that's 
perfectly fine with me. I feel like it would be very interesting to live many lifetimes and have many careers, have many. You could take all the time in the world to... You, yeah, you wouldn't have this, this sense of having to hurry. I'm quite... yes, I would choose that. And also not having to die and suffer seems like a good thing. Mm -hmm. What if only you had that and you had to watch some yeah. of the people you love pass away? Yeah. Would that change anything for you? Probably not, but... No, probably not. Have you seen that movie? The man... It's about a guy who's there at the dinner party and a guy proclaims that he's Jesus actually and he's been living for thousands of years, he doesn't mm -hmm. die. It's an interesting movie, I forget. The man from somewhere. Man from Nazareth, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> but I would do it, I think. Yeah. It's... Me too. I would like to see as much as I can. I see myself as an observer. Maybe not someone who is going to move the world, but if I get to see all those movements, that would be enough Good for enough. me. Yep. It's so appreciated in our society. You should move the world. You should change. You should have an impact. Should we go inside? I think some people get lost in this because they can see the world's problems. They think they have to dedicate their life to, to solving it. Yeah. And I think it's enough to help people as much as you can. Yes. Not necessarily to try to save the entire world at the cost of your life. Yeah, that's true. It, the, the, the ego is just so grandiose. It would like to think that I can save the world. I can do the big thing. And this just helping a friend or helping a, uh, one person is not enough. But in reality, I think you are correct that even doing that is very, is very useful and a beautiful thing. And that might uh, spread even more than one might think. When you help one person, it might lead to this cascade of effects. That's, yeah. but, do you have a bucket list of things you would like to do before you leave? This earth? <laughs> no, I have never thought of the the bucket list uh, in in the classic sense. Maybe family is one thing I would enjoy. I think to be a father. Yeah. If I had to pick like one thing, but Finnish people are more larger family sizes, right? No, I think we have the same issue as the rest of West, the rest of the world, essentially, that we have too little people. I think it's like 1.3 child of children per woman mm -hmm. in Finland. But I come from a large family, so that might affect it for sure. And I would also, what I'm doing right now is exploring, living abroad, especially specifically during winter time in Finland. It's quite dark and cold, and I've never enjoyed that so much. So, see if, if it's possible to set up life such, such that you can stay out in, away in the winter. But, yeah. And uh, would you like to share something about yourself that might surprise people? I really like that you're asking questions, because I get a lot of good questions I can use in my arsenal <laughs> going forward. It's all good. Something surprising about me. I think I meditate quite a lot. Mm -hmm. I do like, daily meditation, usually 20 minutes, sometimes an hour. And I've been doing that for now. I've been trying to meditate for a long time. Ten years ago I started trying, but maybe one or two years ago it really clicked. 
like it going it went from being a chore to something I really enjoy doing mm -hmm. and that, Do you achieve yeah. an altered state yes I would say so how we go one take... more back and forth okay how long did it take to get into that where you weren't just simply trying to clear your mind but you were achieving something I think it was a question of uh, method I was trying wrong methods for my mind there are a thousand different ways to meditate and I was for some reason really caught up in that you should follow the breath or you should pay attention to the breath and that never really clicked for me so when I started doing this mantra meditation where you use a word and you pronounce it internally over and over again for 20 minutes that really caused me to get some into some deeper states mm -hmm. at first it was more of a hypnotic r relaxation just the body and mind really calming down but that's still maybe the main benefit. But then when I started doing that, it was almost in instantaneous. I was like, oh shit, this is a different experience. Uh -huh. more, more relief. Maybe. You generally come across as very calm energy. Is that a byproduct of this or are you naturally like that? I, I, I would say I was quite anxious as a young person. I maybe had a facade of really calm before but in reality I was quite anxious underneath starting you know, it starts as when you become teenager and young 20s and lots of just nobody so it's yes I would say it's a byproduct of this it's hard for me to say because I did these three big changes at kind of similar time I started uh, working out more I started meditating and I started eating good kind of at the same time and but I would say meditation has had the biggest impact on my this calm calmness and it's not always calm but if I'm not calm I can usually fix it by meditating mm -hmm. it's funny enough just works what about for getting your mind in order do you have is meditation for that or do you have a writing process meditation is the biggest one I sometimes write not often and when I do write, it's usually about some idea or some, I want to explain something. So I don't do a daily journal. Do you have an organization system, software or otherwise? <laughs> no, I put everything in a big Google Keep or, or message myself, like massive lists of stuff. So not very digitally organized. I have, what, how do I get my mind in order? I think it's just more about the hardware. I, I eat good, sleep good, and train. And that's 95% of my problem solved. I see. And the last 5% meditation or... <laughs> I, I, maybe I should start writing to fix the last. I think you can outsource some of your memory or organization to uh, an external structure. And if you have a poor memory, then writing it down and having a good system for that can, can bridge that gap, but if you don't need it. What are you using? I'm using something called DynaList. It's like an infinite bullet point list where you can go into further nesting of more and more trees of information. And that's searchable and it's very quick to like write out bullet lists and then organize them. I can send it from one place to another with a, a few keys. So it's a visual tree of bullet lists right now. it's like somewhat visual I'm interested to do an AI thing to make it um, more visual but you can collapse things you can go in further and then add more and more nodes it's like a to-do list that uh, keeps going deeper there's, there's mm. it's like a tree in a way but you keep on adding more branches but it's about that to-do list that's that I can see the value of does it help you yeah it's unclutters your mind I suppose to have a to-do list well in some ways like with coding you can break up any task into subtasks and then further subtasks. Yeah. And even physical things like brushing your teeth with a series of tasks and you can get more and more fine, fine grained of what the, the steps are. So that, that kind of tree structure lets me focus on just that particular part. I wouldn't say I use it for yeah. that's such, such a minor but thing, but just as an example. It's much more useful for software. Any task and software, yeah. I I see the use in writing more now with AI LLMs becoming much better. Like already, 
I tried that thing where you ask ChatGPT, could you share some insights about me from our interactions? Because it's have some sort of mem memory. It was kind of interesting. So that capability is going to improve. It might, it's probably useful to save more in text format or audio for that matter. Because um, it's the same. I'm getting a lot of information from the Discord. Yeah. It's like a lot more than you think that you can know about a person just Actually, by what they say. I, you have in the Discord app you're building, there's this your profile generated based on your Discord comments. And I read mine and I was like, fuck, that's so true. I could agree with this kind of personality overview of myself mm -hmm. based on just what it had read I had posted on the Discord. Well, I, I did tell it to, to be positive in the, yeah. the making the profile, so it's one dimension. Yeah. And, you can do things to pull out more information that I find interesting, like forcing it to guess about personality types. And even though it doesn't really know, its gut guesses at what your Myers-Briggs might be or your Enneagram are usually pretty close on. And there's, in the same way we have gut feelings about people and what they're like, it can pick up very subtle things yeah. and extrapolate. Of course, it might be entirely wrong, but... I've usually been very surprised. Yes, it's like a therapist with infinite memory and infinite, infinite patient, patience, ideally. Mm -hmm. So I can see it happening. What about creative outlets? This is a creative outlet I enjoy. Mm -hmm. I, as I mentioned, did a little bit of writing. I've recently been playing around with these AI video tools. That's kind of creative. You get in a fun flow state when creating. And maybe even martial arts in a way is creative, or sports in general is quite uh -huh. creative. If you play a sport, speci specifically if it's human versus human, there's some uh, composition ele element that yeah. causes it to be, you need to be a bit creative to... To surprise them. Yes. The better you get, the more creativity is what sets you apart. Or maybe not, but creativity is, I like it, that, that, it feels nice. How often do you feel the desire to dance? Quite, quite rarely, but I do feel it at times. It can be very relaxing to dance, just put on some really good dance music and just let go stress in the body. Mm -hmm. mm, so maybe once per quarter. I would say. Very rarely, yeah. But I've, here we did the ecstatic dance thing. And that was something I'd never done before. Ecstatic dance where you just put on music for one hour, two hours. Nobody's allowed to talk and you just move. You can meditate, you can do yoga, you can dance. But most people dance and it was surprisingly fun. I really enjoyed that type of dancing. Hello. I think dancing is like a form of creativity that's easy to tap into. Yes. But I find I don't do it very much unless the outside world pushes me towards it. True, true. Like your body creativity is very intuitive. Mm -hmm. Actually, very true. It's everyone can dance. They just need to turn off the part that's trying to dance. They just need to let it. Yeah. They put some good music on and let what their body wants to do happen. And turn off the parts that criticizes and stops you from, you shouldn't do that thing, why are you, that looks weird. Yeah, yeah, people will dance freely at, by themselves at home. Yes. No problem, most of them. It's an interesting part of yourself, this criticizer. It is so embedded in, in it, it's nice to observe it once in a while, like, oftentimes it's very wrong. It's usually good to dance. And for some reason it criticizes. So that's been useful to, to realize that it's there and you are not that thing that is, you can actually, yeah, be, it's okay. In a way. Are you good at visualizing things? Not really. I can visualize, but it's more of a, have you seen those programs on the iPad where you draw and then it fades away the image? Uh -huh. Or yeah. this Japanese type of drawing. I can visualize and then it fades away. 
So if I try to visualize something complex, I can start with one part. And when I get to the end, the beginning is kind of gone. Yeah. So I don't use visualizing a lot when I think. I think much more in gestalts or in like this intuitive just comes to me. This is the solution or verbally, I suppose, but not even verbally. I quite rarely feel like, I don't know. I, I, I don't often think verbally either. <laughs> More of a, and for that matter, visualize. What about you? Uh, same as you, I, I feel there's maybe three types in this, this sense of visual versus words versus logic, I would say. Visual words, logic. Like you're trying to figure out something. Yeah. Some people really like to have some kind of visual in their head that they can grasp onto. Yeah. Some people want to talk it out or they have an internal monologue that's all words. And then some people, they can perform those kind of things and do a, a, a bad visualization yeah. or a bad internal monologue to rehearse what they have to say. Yeah. But the more the way I perceive it is when I'm thinking about something, I intuitively know it. Mm. And I'm kind of exploring little edges of it. And then that puts it into whatever's happening behind the scenes. And then I know the answer. I like that. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned this because it's often people only talk about you think in words or you think in images. Mm -hmm. and, and I haven't heard about this third. But I, I do identify as something not quite either of those. It's very good. It can do a poor imitation of the other ones. Yeah. I don't know if I'll ever be able to deliver a speech like some people can. Yeah, or, or imagine the whole engineering fucking program in, mm -hmm. in visual. Or even right. like see someone's face and draw it. Yeah. Well, thank you for this uh, interview. This was really better. fun for me. <laughs> thank you, man. Really, thank you.